Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. I'm really excited because I got a lot of feedback on this video that I did last fall, and I wanted to do kind of an update video, a much more simplified way of getting power to your furnace in the event of an emergency. Now, most of you homeowners who have gas furnaces, if you look by your furnace, you more than likely will just see a little switch like this, and there's simply no means of getting power to that furnace in the event that you have no power but you do still have natural gas or propane. So we're going to show you a super basic way of getting power to that furnace so that you can have heat in the event of an emergency winter power outage. Now there's several ways of getting power to your furnace but this is 100% the easiest and cheapest method to get power to your furnace and all it involves using is a little connector like this which we'll show you in more detail in a second an outlet, and a pigtail like this one that you can get from Home Depot or Amazon. Okay, so I'm obviously just using this furnace for demonstration purposes. You probably noticed there's not a, a return grill here. So the very first thing we're gonna do before we take this cover off and show you what's inside is we're gonna head over to the breaker panel and we're gonna make sure that the power is turned off to your gas furnace. It'll more than likely be a 15 amp breaker, possibly a 20 amp breaker if it's an older furnace. So we're gonna go ahead and start by removing this cover. So now, as we said before, we're just gonna confirm that there's no power. And we're gonna go ahead and take this off. So this is more than likely what you'll see when you take your switch off. You'll see your main power lead going to one part of the switch and then the furnace wire going to the other side of the switch. And then you'll notice inside here, our neutral is just wire nutted. And then we have one ground on the switch and we have our other ground tapped into our box there. Okay, so what we're gonna do to start with is we're just gonna go ahead and disconnect all of the wiring to this switch. And you'll notice that any stranded wire will have a connector um, if you just wrap this around here, that's not, not going to be a good connection. And any solid wiring, um, you can't put a connector on these because they, um, they just won't hold. So you want to loop it like this, make sure you have good coverage, and always make sure that the screw is spinning in the same rotation as your wire is going around the screw. And lastly, we're going to disconnect our neutral so that these are totally isolated. So now, as you can see, we have the grid power coming in here. This is completely isolated from our three wires that go to the furnace. So we have our neutral, our hot, and our ground, and our neutral, our hot, and our ground that's connected to this box. So next, what we're gonna do is take the front cover off of our furnace. So now that we have this removed, the next thing that we're gonna do, and you'll probably have this on your furnace, if you don't, you can make a half inch hole. That's where this piece comes in. So this is just a wire holder. So as you can see, it has the nut that will hold this in place. And then our pigtail will actually clamp inside of here. So there'll be no movement and our pigtail will come out like this. So let's go ahead and knock this out. You should just be able to tap that and it should pop out. And now all we do is take this a nut off slide it in and put the nut on the back. Now let's go ahead and loosen up these so that we have plenty of room to work with. Now as you can see we have a nice big opening here and then once we put that pigtail in we can clamp it. Okay so here's the pigtail we got. This is rated for a 15 amp. As you saw our breaker was a 15 amp as well. If you have a 20 amp breaker obviously you want a cable that's capable of handling 20 amps. So now that this has been undone we're going to feed this into our furnace and then we're just gonna give ourselves enough slack that we can go back into the junction box like this and we'll make all of our connections inside of here. And now we're just gonna tighten this back down so that cord is not gonna have any movement and it's not gonna rub on any sharp edges. So now this is solid. This is not going to be rubbing on anything. Now, while I'm doing this, I want to mention something that um, I've talked to several people, electricians who have said that this is totally fine to run a, a proper gauge extension cord that you can plug into an outlet. Uh, this is basically like any other appliance. Now, in some ordinances, they might say, you know, this will not pass uh, an inspection. 
in which case you can easily wire this back to how it was. But a lot of places would have zero issue with there being an outlet here and this simply plugging into that outlet. So I just wanted to go ahead and address that for all of you that want to comment on that. Feel free to, but know that I already addressed it. Okay, so basically just to simplify this, our junction box right now is just being used so that we can connect our furnace wires to our pigtail wires, meaning that this is totally separate. And then we're going to simply wire in an outlet right here once we have our connections for this made. So we're simply gonna go green to green, white to white, and black to black here. All right, so what we're gonna be using here to make our connections are called Wago lever nuts. Now you can choose to use a wire nut. This is totally your preference, uh, whether or not you wanna use these. I really like the Wagos. People will say that um, they have bad things to say about them, but I personally have never had an issue. And until that point, I'm gonna continue using them. So I'll just show you how easy they are to use. So you simply slide this into the opening. You make sure that it's touching on the backside here. And then you simply lock that little um, lever there and it is not going anywhere. I'm pulling on this just about as hard as I can and it won't go anywhere. So you just do that on both sides. And especially where these are really helpful is if you don't have a ton of space. So in this case, we're working with a, a smaller pigtail here. So these are perfect and you can just push them in and they're good to go. Now, something that some people have said is these can come loose by themselves. And what you can do is once you have your connection made, you can throw some tape on it and that will ensure that that lever nut will never come loose. Okay, so all three of our connections are made between the pigtail and the furnace. So we're just gonna kind of tuck these wires into the back of our box here. And now this last step is extremely easy. It's where we're going to install our outlet. So as you probably already know, if you've ever installed an outlet, the black power wire is going to go to the right side of the outlet or the gold terminals here. And these are connected. So either of these, they're both the same. And then the neutral will go to the silver side and ground will go to ground. So we're just gonna hook this back up the same way. And we're gonna give this an extra tighten here, just like that. So a lot of people didn't know this, but on these wire strippers, you see these holes here, those are there for a purpose. And so you can just put it on the edge of the wire and you can spin it all the way around 180 degrees. And what you'll end up with is a perfect hook that you can put on your outlet. So we're gonna do the same thing right here. So we're gonna attach this to the neutral side, again, making sure that the wire goes this way around the screw. Now, as far as our ground, this ground wire from the furnace attached to the ground on the pigtail. And being as our ground is attached to this box, we are still grounding being as this is attached to a metal box, uh, but you could alternatively put a pigtail on the um, ground terminal on the box and run it to this if you want to, but you can do it either way. So we're gonna rotate this the proper way to where the power is on the right side and we're gonna feed it in and attach it. All right, so this install is complete. We can go ahead and flip the breaker back on and make sure that we have power here to the outlet. Now, the beauty of this is that this is a pigtail, like as if this was any other appliance, like a toaster or a microwave, and this is totally isolated. So in the event of a power outage, we plug this into our power station or an extension cord that goes out to our generator, and we have zero possibility of power back feeding through this to the grid. It's completely isolated from this outlet. Now, code says that you just have to have a means by which you can disconnect this, and in my previous video, I thought that was that switch. So you can use that same method in my previous video if you have it installed. It's totally fine. Same thing applies here, except with this, it's a little bit, it's a lot more simple. So there's no switch. And as soon as you unplug this, that's your means of disconnecting this furnace and killing power to it.
Now, as far as this extra cordage, we have plenty to plug into a power station if it's within nine feet. You can make this however long you want it. If you only want it, you know, this long and you can put your power station right here, you can trim it and make it that long. You can also spool this up and just keep it zip tied next to the furnace under normal operation. That's totally up to you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna zip tie this to the MC cable here for our grid power. And that's gonna keep this cord out of the way. And we should still be able to have plenty of room to remove our filter and replace it as needed. All right, so that's our finished product. I wanna go ahead and demonstrate how easy this is to use. So say our power just went out, there's no power coming from this outlet now from the grid. So we're going to simply unplug our furnace. We're gonna cut our zip tie to give us the full length. And we've got our Vito Man 1000 watt um, power station here. We're simply gonna plug it in. We're gonna turn on AC power. And our furnace should kick on momentarily. So our blower just came on. That's gonna be on a one minute timer and then our inducer will come on. And there we go, our inducer just came on. So we're gonna go ahead and start our heating cycle. You'll notice after a minute here, our hot surface igniter will come on. There we go. And if we had gas connected to this at the moment, uh, we would have fire, but we don't at the moment. But I just wanted to demonstrate how easy this whole system is to use. It's super easy, super basic, and I feel like any homeowner should be able to do this. Now you may or may not have known this already, but you can power your gas furnace with your vehicle if you don't have a generator or a power station. If you're interested in that video, check it out right here, and I'm sure you'll find it fascinating. Until next time, you guys be safe. Later.